Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's Good Friday, April 10th, 2020. And not a reading in terms of a meditation, not even a prayer. One of the things that happens to us in our life, and perhaps especially on this day, is when the seemingly inconsequential have the greatest consequence. There is a book by Dom Gregory Dix, published 1945, called The Shape of the Liturgy. And among all the other things in that glorious book, I even thought that was a glorious book in seminary, is this following passage and this Good Friday, for you and for me, these words from Don Gregory Dix. To those who know a little of Christian history, probably the most moving of all the reflections it brings is not the thought of the great events and the well-remembered saints, but of those innumerable millions of entirely obscure faithful men and women, everyone with his or her own individual hopes and fears and joys and sorrows and loves and sins and temptations and prayers, every, once every whit as vivid and alive as mine are now, they have left no slightest trace in this world, not even a name, but have passed to God, utterly forgotten by men. Yet each one of them believed and prayed as I believe and pray and found it hard and grew slack and sinned and repented and fell again. Each of them worshiped at the Eucharist and found their thoughts wandering and tried again and felt heavy and unresponsive and yet knew just as really and pathetically as I do these things. There is a little ill-spelled, ill-carved, rustic epitaph of the fourth century from Asia Minor. Quote, here sleeps the blessed Chion who has found Jerusalem for she prayed much, close quote. Not another word is known of Chion, some peasant woman who lived in that vanished world of Christian Anatolia. But how lovely, if all that should survive after 16 centuries were that one had prayed much so that the neighbors who saw all one's life were sure one must have found Jerusalem. What did the Sunday Eucharist in her village church every week for a lifetime mean to the blessed Gion and to the millions like her and every year since? The sheer stupendous quantity of the love of God which this ever-repeated action has drawn from the obscure Christian multitudes through the centuries is in itself an overwhelming thought. All that going with one to the altar every morning. Amen.